Good afternoon. Man, December was a breeze, warmer than usual, very mild. Then you got to January. The whole month was brutal. I mean, week after week. I mean, if you, um, you know, if you have the weather app, I mean, you're probably going to be on daily with these freeze warnings left and right. I mean, I don't remember a week not seeing these uh, pop-ups. But anyway, I wanted to um, show you today the the damage that the, the, the practically month-long freeze has done to some of the tropicals. I mean, yeah, these tropicals, I mean, they, they, they can tolerate it, but at the same time, it, it's not uncommon that, you know, damage will occur. Damage is frost damage. Uh, well, there's two forms of damage, frost damage and cold damage. <sighs> there's really just no escaping. And in, in that place, in that case, I mean, when you look above me, the microclimate is really going to be the best protection against the cold. I mean, in this little section, it's generally a couple of degrees warmer than open air. And a couple of degrees is life and death to some trees. So I wanted to show you this. So in this little corner, okay, check it out. This is what the cold does to them. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I'm laughing because this happens every year. So this is common and this is to be expected. I mean, it just like dries up the foliage, sucks out the moisture uh, and you know, like causes them to die out like this. But at the same time, I'm not concerned because I know these guys will bounce back. Melee apple. Ooh, boy. The star apple, the Kaimitos got it like the worst. Yeah, I mean, this guy is, I mean, this is an equivalent of the tree stressing out and hair falling out. Literally. Yeah, like, look, check it out. Yeah, but again, I'm not concerned because I know these guys will bounce back. And as we were approaching the end of January, we realistically, maybe a, a month and a half, maybe a month and a half to go. Uh, but looking at the forecast, I don't see any more uh, freezes in the forecast. Um, it's going to be in the low 40s, which is perfect. Um, but yeah, Whew. sugar apples got it the worst. Now, this guy does this every year, okay? So this is one of the more uh, cold sensitive uh, known as. Yeah, actually, if you come in here, even the, well, I mean, of course, the wax bamboo is gonna behave pretty badly. Um, oh yeah. This is, I mean, this is expected. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not sad. I mean, I, I, I anticipated this. <laughs> Gumachio, aka uh, Manala Tamarin. Oh boy. Now this guy again. This guy. This guy does this every year. Okay, so I'm I'm not freaking out. And uh, red uh, custard apple here, which I'm afraid to open up the top. But let let's perform the reveal. Ooh. He's just ugly. <laughs> hey, you know what? That, that's one of the uh, uh, the consequences, I guess, of growing these here. I'll try to grow them here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he's going to bounce back as with previous years, as you can see. I mean, when you look at it, that, that's when it died down and then new growth came out. So as long as the roots are alive, he'll bounce back. Pretty sure he'll bounce back. <laughs> I guess we'll uh, wait and see. And then you get like other tropicals, um, Kenastel, which is great. Yeah. Sam were like uh, a cha cha. 
You would think that this guy would like be all dead. But no. A cha-cha? I mean, he's related to the Mangostein family. I mean, no damage whatsoever. So yeah, just you, you gotta realize these are <laughs> the living organism. So some just has better immunity than others. So now let's uh let's go out to the uh rest of the backyard and then we'll check it out. Yeah. And as you can see, this corner of the yard is somewhat protected. Uh, my goal was uh, to protect against the wind. So can you imagine if this section was not protected against the wind? As we get those rainy days accompanied by the wind, it is just gonna be all dead. I'm pretty sure of it. Oh, uh, let's, let's come over here actually. Yeah, so Lancet here mango. Eww. Kind of ugly looking, happens. Papaya finally showing some uh, cold damage. A and he's, you know, uh, somewhat mature, but uh, as you can see, the exterior of the foliage that's facing the, uh, the, the, the air, the coal. I mean, yeah, this is what's gonna happen. <sighs> this is a better example. <laughs> Look at him, yeah. I mean, when you look at what's above him and, and nearby him, no protection whatsoever. So it, he's basically exposed to the uh, elements. So that's why you're seeing him pretty crappy looking like that. So now there's uh, one other tree that I wanted to show you. Alrighty, so check it out. <laughs> Pretty sad that it uh, it happened, but it is what it is. Another papaya. Check him out. Had to uh, prune him back. So, uh, under most circumstances, I don't take any action to rectify the coal because I know there's more frost coming, which is why I don't, you know, which is why I leave all the leaves, all the branches on the tree, the damaged leaves, branches on the tree, except this guy. The reason for this is because he was having a, a fungal issue right towards the middle of the tr uh, tree. And it was severe enough where one day it actually just simply tipped over and, um, doing so broke this branch here. So, yeah. So I decided to uh, just chop him off uh, at right below the infect infected area and using uh, IV organic horticultural paint, um, just cover up the, the wound. So I'm fairly certain that come uh, spring and, and as the weather warms up that uh, new branches, new growth will appear from um, from underneath the cut, and then it's gonna be like a, a multi trunk uh, papaya tree, and each trunk will have a, its own set of fruit. So, yeah, cool. So besides that, I mean, what else is there? I mean, everything else looks fine. So yeah, it's uh, just just a. Uh, just hang tight, I guess. That that's the uh, message here. Uh, I mean, you know, you and I, you know, we've got warm stuff to put on when it's cold. These guys, no. I mean, the only warmth that these guys around me have access to is the warm protection from above, from the main protection trees. Yeah, Taiwanese guava. I mean, without the Jamun up there, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be all red. Same with the uh, batch of Chelmoya still. So yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, why, you know, in the very beginning, strategically, I've got these two big, well, technically three, including the, uh, the bamboo cl uh, clumps there, uh, right in the middle of the yard, serving as kind of like a big umbrella, protecting these against the cold and the frost. Um, 
Yeah. You know, one thing that uh, people don't, <laughs> well, people keep asking me is if I have any avocado, and uh, yes, I do. They do great here. Read avocado. I mean, so much better than like longins, for example. I mean, granted, the other two are in containers, but yeah, no, he's he's a good size boy and um, fairly young too. I want to say in the ground just two years. Um, yeah, no, these guys can definitely take the coal. Um, so, yeah. Uh, besides that, everything else seems to be uh, holding on for another uh, few more months until the, the frost is gone. And once the weather warms up, I mean, again, I, I guarantee you, I mean, that's where the, the magic happens again. That's where the, the growth returns. And uh, right around that time, that's where you want to start watering them cons uh, consistently. Uh, and more importantly, fertilizing them consistently because they'll need all the building blocks from the nutrients uh, of the fertilizer to get themselves stronger and therefore able to resist the elements just a bit better. So anyhow, all right, have a good afternoon.